Today you join Matt and I in Normandy in the north of France and we're going to be exploring this beautiful chateau behind me. It's called Chateau de Sevigny, also nicknamed the D-Day Chateau as it plays an important role in the history of World War II on D-Day back in June in 1944. So in this episode we're going to be exploring the grounds inside the chateau. Matt and I are also staying here tonight so we'll film it in the evening so we can show you what it looks like and we'll also be introducing you to the owner. But before we start the tour, we just want to say a massive thank you for 500,000 subscribers. I remember the day when this channel went from 99 subscribers to 100 and I was so happy. And I cannot believe we've reached half a million. So if you've watched us from the start or 100,000, 200,000 subscribers, or you just randomly clicked on this video, Matt and I want to say a massive thank you because without you, we would not be standing and being able to share this incredible chateau with you. Yeah, massive thank you from me also. Let us know down in the comments below at what point you subscribed to our channel. Was it at 5,000 subscribers, 10,000, or was it last week? And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you click that button down below. It really helps us out. Now let's start exploring out the front. So to my right, we have a beautiful building, which is a stables and a gorgeous tower. I like to call it a princess tower. Um, but I believe that's where the defense would be in. And the little window you can see is where they used to fire archery to the enemies. You got it. <laughs> Beautiful architecture from the front. And then to my left, we have the main driveway with gated access and there's around 20 acres with so many beautiful trees. Now, before we carry on this tour, let me introduce you to the owner. Hello, I'm Arnaud de Pontac. I'm the owner of the Chateau de Servigny. We are in the Cotentin Peninsula in Normandy, and we are at three hours by train from Paris. This house, as I call it because I, be, I grew up here, belongs to my family since uh, the late uh, 17th century. Now, isn't it amazing meeting the owners behind these homes? Now, as I mentioned earlier, this chateau is nicknamed the D-Day Chateau, as there was actually a surrender agreement signed between the Germans and Americans in one of the drawing rooms, which we're gonna take you inside later. Now, before we continue, let's take a moment to remember the historic event of D-Day. D-Day, which stands for Day of Days, is a term used to refer to the Allied invasion of Normandy, France, during World War II. It was one of the most significant military operations in history and took place on June 6, 1944. The invasion marked the beginning of the campaign to liberate Western Europe from Nazi occupation. The troops were divided into five landing zones, codenamed Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno, and Sword. The Allied forces stormed the beaches of Normandy on the morning of June 6, 1944. The landings were met with fierce German resistance, especially at Omaha Beach. D-Day played a crucial role in the ultimate victory of the Allies in World War II and is remembered as a pivotal moment in history. On June 26, 1944, at 4pm, the surrender of Cherbourg, the only peace treaty signed during World War II, was signed by the American General Joseph Lawton Collins and the German General Karl Wilhelm von Schlieben in the drawing room of the Chateau de Sauvigny. During the World War II, uh, we were occupied, like many of us properties, we had um, up to 50 barracks of German troops here, 800 horses. As you can see, the architecture is quite interesting. Um, when people know well the architecture, they usually don't think they are in, um, in Normandy. They just think it looks like a Chateau de la Loire facade. As you come into the entrance, you're greeted by two knights of armor. Let's check them out a little closer up. They look so cool. And then also on the wall, you have swords and the old arms that were used and are owned by this family. It's like being in a museum. I love this chateau. It's a tour for you guys, but also we're gonna check out all of the memorabilia. Kind of want to try this on. <laughs> Walk around in it. Should do the tour in it. Yeah, don't need the gym then. Uh, they're heavy. Coming into the first reception room, we will be showing you shortly the drawing room upstairs which the surrender agreement was signed in, so stay tuned. We have this stunning stone fireplace in here. Then through those curtains, we have a little dining section, which overlooks the garden. Now coming out to the entrance, I do just quickly want to mention, part of the chateau is kept as a private family residence. So this is the rented part, which we'll leave the link down in the description below if you do want to come and stay here. Now coming through to a dining room. Check out this door. Like everything is so interesting. It's French Renaissance architectural style for the most part. 
I love these kind of archways between the rooms and the ceiling beams up here have such intricate details and paintings on, it's so cool. Come and show us this fireplace as well. Look at the size of that. You can actually, it's the height of me. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You have some tapestries on the wall and there's also an ancient window, which at the moment looks through to the staff staircase. Now coming through here, it leads us into a little corridor section, some cute pots on the wall, and it leads us into the kitchen for the guests. So obviously this is separate to the private residence, but if you are staying here for a week, this is everything you need. It's everything we need. We had some delicious croissants laid out this morning, fresh, croissant. Would anyone like a croissant? Number Orange number? juice, fresh bread, it was amazing. And also, this is, I believe, apple juice, yeah, juice de pomme and there's an area on the estate which is where they used to make the apple juice. So we are going to visit what we call the pressoir in French. It's a place where you used to press to uh, the apples and to make uh, apple juice or cider. It is like it was before. Um, they stopped the production in the, in the 17th approximately. Coming through the entrance hallway, the staircase in this house is a beautiful sort of spiral style and look at all the stuff on the walls, it's so interesting. We've got some more arms up here and then there's a box here full of war medals. Wow, and look, all the names of the commanders and officers. Incredible, it's one of the most special parts of the home that they've retained all of this history. The ironmongery detailing on the stairs is yeah, really amazing. Now, as you come up the stairs, there's photos to my right of General Collins, the American officer, and then the German officer, von Schlieben, I believe. And this was a picture in the drawing room upstairs, which we're going to show you. Ready? And that's a closer up of General Collins, which we'll find out more about very soon. The first floor is the principal suite, which Matt and I are staying in tonight. But before we explore that, I want to take you into the most important room and the most interesting, which is the drawing room where the surrender agreement was signed. So it is here where they signed on this desk, uh, in this room, the rendition um, of Cherbourg. You have an interesting photo showing the young general uh, Joseph Lauton Collins. He was the commander of the Seventh Corp. Seventh Corp is the Utah Beach which is right here. Uh, the idea for the Americans was to conquer Cherbourg Port. We are just in the middle of the peninsula here. For the Americans, when they decided to create Utah Beach in February, was to conquer Cherbourg Port. Cherbourg is facing the, the, the England and it is the control of the channel. So it was very important because they knew at that time that the uh, artificial port was not enough to bring all to conquer the Europe. So Cherbourg is the most important artificial port of the world. You see a locomotive uh, a train coming from a boat and you, you need a very uh, strong and hard port to, to bring this on, uh, on the ground. Here you have a copy uh, of the rendition treaty. Um, we have never found uh, at least uh, the original, but this is an extract from the scrap book of uh, General Collins. C so Collins was commanding 7th Corp, the Airborne Division, well known. You see this photo, I'm here and, uh, as a child, and it's when uh, General Collins came back in '84. It was fascinating for me because I was uh, just 14 years ago, 14 years, and uh, see helicopters. Wow, so when General Collins came to visit, he came in that helicopter. And on the wall, you see, uh, after the war, they painting in blue, the wall. Mm -hmm. But uh, during the war, is this... Uh, ah, so you have a... You yeah. see on the here, yeah. here, yeah. uh, here, everywhere. Yeah. In 1994, an American veteran came back and he, he was in the battle, Edward. So now you've been in the famous historic drawing room and learned all the history about what happened. It was so fascinating to be in that room and standing 
where all of that took place. How did it make you feel, Matt? It's quite powerful, actually, to be honest, especially looking at those original war photos. I think there's nothing like seeing, you know, that in person. It just takes you back to what a time that would have been. I mean, I would have been fighting in the war. I know. My brother would have been, you know, it was real and it was just everyday people like us. Absolutely crazy. In the photos, you could really see the emotion. The fact that you could see photos of the General von Schlieben from Germany walking and it's, you can see the wall that he was walking past in the photo to now. Yeah. And I think it's just in, important to show a significant amount of gratitude to everyone that took part, you know, all of our allies in the war. Life would look very differently for us today if it was a different outcome. For sure. So let's carry on this tour. This is part of the principal suite. So there's a lot of little rooms, but this is, I guess, like a chess room. Look at this chess board. Yeah, let's have a game of chess later. And did you say this room is named after General Collins yeah, himself? Yeah, this is the General Collins room. Coming into the principal suite's drawing room, we have a beautiful bookshelf here. Lots of intricate details above the door. I love this fireplace. Let's check this out a little more, Matt. Incredible. So this is where Summer and I are staying. And don't forget, this property is available on Airbnb. So if you want to experience a piece of history and some of the most beautiful architecture in the area, you can actually come and stay in this very suite. Now come over to the window, Matt, because this has beautiful views of the gardens. I mean, every window has such beautiful views. But there's actually some cool stuff outside. And one of the things that I think is cool is a little mini chateau. This is the, um, the playhouse. You can see uh, a very small chimney, um, small chairs, uh, everything for, for kids who wants to play. But I had the chance to grow up with the boys of the farms. There were four boys between in my age. So um, every, every holidays, every time I had, uh, just after lunch, I go out and spend my time with, with the kids of the farms. What I used to do is taking my bicycle, running very fast in the park. Here is an antique path. Antique path, it means dating from the, from the Roman period. I okay. have uh, a small chapel here. As you can see, it's an intimate chapel. Renonculant, <laughs> it means it grew, grows up and suddenly go to, to the grounds to, and restart. Like yeah. that one? Like, yes, yes, yes. Because sometimes you think, well, it's died, but no, no, it, it, <laughs> it's restart. Now there are two entrances to the bedroom space. We'll go through this one here. Check out the details on the door, Matt. Wow. We have a bathroom through this door. Now coming into the bedroom. This has got a red theme going on in here. And there's fabric on the wall, which is similar to what they did back in the olden times, isn't it? There wasn't wallpaper, it was actual fabric. And the outlook is just stunning. And there's so many different areas that you can explore. If you enjoy cycling or running uh, or walking, and exploring this place would be so ideal as yeah. we're experiencing. I love how easy all the windows open. You can just stare outside and there's the cool cannon. Cannon was, uh, was in the port, uh, Cherbourg port. It was uh, dig in the soil just for um, the boat to be attached. It did. Yeah. So it was like planted like this, like a tree. Okay, we have one more drawing room on this floor to show you. Shall we swap around, Matt, and you can show everyone? Okay, let's go. I've just been filming, so I think I might need to get changed. Or do we think it's okay? You look fine. Black All polo. Right. Come on through. We're continuing through the principal suite. All of this part of the bedroom space. They have yellow painted walls throughout here. And this drawing room is so impressive. One of my favorites, actually, down to the paint color. It was actually painted like this after the war. We talked about the principal room, they used fabric previously and on all of the photos um, where the general was there, they had a different fabric finish on the wall and it was then painted to this blue afterwards. But it reminds me of the sky on a beautiful day. It looks incredible. 
This drawing room features beautiful chandeliers, amazing lighting, yet another marble uh, fireplace here. So impressive. We have the standing piano. And a detail that I love is the owner is an architect by practice and for his diploma, as I understand it, this was something he created alongside his uncle. It's a replica of the chateau and the surrounding grounds. This is quite interesting. This is the model I've done for my diploma of architect. You see the chateau, it's quite important. But the most important part is the art buildings. The estate was quite important and you have the farm with uh, some stables here. I, lo I lose my father very young and my uncle took care of me. He was very interesting in um, antiques. So we spent weeks to, to buy some antiques. Uh, he was very interesting in architecture. He has created some, we call it folly, follies in the park, a playhouse for children, a temple of Neptune on the pounds. Now finishing in this room, another detail to notice is they've actually used marble as the skirting all the way around, very grand. We have the second floor to show you. Now Summer and I have been very busy on our stay here, touring the grounds, meeting the owner, meeting the caretaker. We're yet to actually explore the second floor and we haven't been up here yet. So I'm just admiring everything that I can see. There is the most incredible portrait up wow. there. Wow. Yeah, we thought we would leave a little bit for our first impressions. Look at this as well. Should we explore this way? Yeah, let's go down there. So we have some guest bedrooms here each with their ensuite, so bedroom through there. Wow, Matt, I wonder what's down there. I know, I don't know if we have the key to that, you know. Ooh. Yes, staff staircase. Mm -hmm. It's perfect, single beds for kids. You have in this room, for example, fascinating wallpaper that actually matches the bed coverings. Here we have one of the bathrooms with perhaps an original washing style facility. So we've got the marble casing around the doorway yet again. Montgomery bedroom. Again, all a slightly different theme. Certainly every room's gonna make you feel quite royal when coming to stay here. There's so many bedrooms. <laughs> so many bedrooms and so many lights. <laughs> Trying to turn them all on. This is a nice room. So we've got the double bed there. Look at the, kind of the curtain above the bed there. So we're quite high up in the house now. We wonder are. where we are. This is a small little window overlooking the garden. This is the last room we're going to show you here because the door to my left then connects to the family private part of the house, of the chateau. Okay guys, it is around 9 p.m. now. Matt and I went to the local restaurant for some food. We thought we would turn the camera on so we can embrace the outdoor Outdoor, I mean evening uh, footage a little more because just the house looks beautiful in the evening too. Anyway, it's getting late, so we're gonna head into our principal suite, which we're staying in. Oh my God, so cool. And catch you guys in the morning. Ah. Good morning, everyone. I slept like a princess in her castle last night. Now let's get ready for the day. Good morning, Jean-Jacques. We have a few more hours at the chateau this morning, so we want to carry on exploring with you all. Let's walk around to the back. I want to walk past the stables, which is a beautiful building. We could check out the orangery and go past the little turret, which was a watchtower. It was a watchtower, but for you, it's a princess tower. You're yeah. looking like a princess of the chateau today. We should have maybe asked to see if it opens up and we could have like gone up, gone up to the top. Yeah, that would have been cool. So this is the stables. So here you have um, some bikes here. What is amazing is old stables. It didn't move since um, it has been built. So guests can enjoy, uh, make a tour with bicycles. It's a beautiful morning here in Normandy. Yeah. Our last morning here. So here's a little look at the orangery. 
There's a nice big space inside there. As you can see, we have a decoration uh, like a, a greenhouse. Uh, it's like the first ceinture of the Chateau de Versailles in the garden. Anybody home? <laughs> Imagine if somebody actually opened it and someone lived in there. Yeah. Okay, let's walk around the garden. So this is the private family residence side of the chateau and we were staying on the other side. Let us know down in the comments what's your favourite feature about this chateau. For me, I love the little turrets on the outside. Yeah, I think this architectural style French Renaissance is so grand from the outside. You just can't stop looking in awe at this building. I mean, as we start to reveal the scale of the building now, it's just so impressive. How incredible does that look? There's so many things to do here. We're gonna actually go for a bit of a walk, then maybe hop in the pool. We've gotta basically cram loads of stuff in before we go because we wanna experience everything. <laughs> we hope you guys enjoyed watching this. If you did, please remember to hit like and subscribe. We'll leave the link to this property in the description below. And if you've got a unique house, a chateau maybe, or something incredible, maybe a self-build journey, or just a house that you love, We'd love to hear from you, so make sure to email us to apply to be on the show and we can come and visit your house. Yeah, we love to see variety from buildings that are centuries old to modern, brand new, constructed. Yeah. Drop us an email with what you have and we'll check it out. See you guys later.